to know if you can make a beautiful pot roast in the Instant Pot using the slow cook feature? Well, I was curious too, so we did a test and the results were shocking. Keep watching. For this test, I didn't think that the actual recipe mattered that much, so this is just what I do, but you can do your own pot roast recipe. For mine, I took two chuck roasts that I bought at Costco, and these I try to get the most similar in size and in marbling so that we could get as close of an identical test as possible. And I'm just going to cover them in a spice blend of some all-purpose flour, garlic powder, smoked paprika, Montreal steak seasoning, and salt and pepper. I'm just covering both of the roasts, and then I always sear my roast before I put them in the slow cooker. This just gives another really good layer of flavor and it just really enhances the broth, the gravy, everything. So I think it's really important. Now, since we're doing a side-by-side -side test, I wanted to kind of see the pros and cons. So for our first one, we're doing the instant pot roast. So I just put it on high saute and then I just put a little bit of olive oil in the pot and then we are going to sear it on high saute for about five to 10 minutes or until it gets golden. I will say that the instant and pot sear function does not work nearly as well as a regular pan, so that's something to keep in mind. It is nice though that you can do it straight in the pot. Now over to our slow cooker pot roast, we're gonna do the exact same thing, except I'm searing it in a cast iron pan on the stove top. You can tell that this gets a lot hotter, a lot faster, and so it sears really quickly and nicely. There's a little bit more goldenness on it. And I'm just going to sear this on all sides. This usually takes about half an hour just to get all of the sides really nice, golden, and crispy. I'm going to now deglaze the Instant Pot by taking out the meat and putting it on a separate plate for a second. Then I'm going to add just a little bit more oil and I'm going to add celery that I found in my freezer. I don't usually add vegetables to my pot roast, but I wanted to see them side by side, Instant Pot and slow cooker. After I put the celery in there, I'm going to deglaze with two cups of beef broth and just a splash of soy sauce. Make sure you scrape the bottom of your pot or pan to lift off all of those cooked bits. That's called fawn and that is all flavor that you want incorporated into your sauce. After that's all incorporated, I'm going to put the meat back into the Instant Pot and then I put in about five baby potatoes. I wanted to see how well they would do, how soft they would be, so I'm just scattering them on the sides. Now I'm putting the lid on my Instant Pot and this is really important. Make sure that the knob is in the venting position. This is different because every single other recipe that we do, we always have to put in the sealing position. But since we are using the Instant Pot as a slow cooker, we want to make sure that it is venting so then it will actually slow cook. If it's in the sealing position, you'll get an error and you won't be able to slow cook. Now we're just doing the exact same thing over for the slow cooker roast. I just took my meat after it was seared, put it in a different pan for a second, and then I deglazed the pot with celery, onion flakes, two cups of beef broth, and a splash of soy sauce. Put the chuck roast into the slow cooker, and then I'm going to pour all of that over the top and then scatter those baby potatoes as well. And now we're going to cook both of these pot roasts for eight and a half hours on low. The Instant Pot manual says that the low, medium, and high settings are similar to the low, medium, and high on a slow cooker or crock pot, so that's what we're going with to give it a exact side-by-side -side test. So now that our pot roasts are in the Instant Pot and the slow cooker, I'm going to let them cook eight and a half hours, and we'll just check in throughout the day. I'm going to check in using a thermometer to just kind of gauge and see how well they're cooking throughout the day, and we'll do a test at the end. The roasts have been cooking for about four hours, so I'm going to check in on the slow cooker roast first. You can see there's quite a bit of liquid in there and it's bubbling and boiling. And I'm just going to use my thermopen to see what the temperature of the roast is and we can kind of gauge how it's looking. Just about 200 and it's still feeling, I mean, it's very, like, it's very fork tender, like it's going straight in, but it's not quite fall apart tender. Okay, I'm going to flip the potatoes and let's poke them and see how they're doing. They're right at about 200 degrees as well and they're super soft. I think these are like mashable soft. They were kind of like falling apart. <laughs> So far looking good. I'm not going to flip it. I'm just going to let it stay. Just kind of pat it down a little bit so it's getting some more liquid. Smells good and we'll go check on the Instant Pot. Let's open up our Instant Pot roast. Remember it has to be on the venting position. 
Now the first thing I'm noticing right off the bat is that there is no bubbling. There's no simmering. I mean, it's cooking, but it doesn't like smell like the crock pot one does. So let's check the temperature with the Thermapen 167. And I can tell that this one is way, way tougher. <laughs> like there's resistance when the thermometer is going in. You can just kind of tell by looking at it that it's that it's tougher. So definitely not as cooked. Let's check these potatoes. Okay, the potatoes are coming in at 150 and they are definitely not ready to mash. There's quite a bit of resistance. I can tell that they're raw in the middle. So this is at four hours cooked. We are at between one 60 and 175. It's definitely not cooking as fast or as hot. Well, it's been eight and a half hours. Let's go check them out now. I'm going to open them up. This is our pot roast, our slow cooker pot roast. And here is our instant pot pot roast. Those, these have both been cooking for eight and a half hours. And if you remember, this one was temping quite a bit lower than this one. So let's check this now. Still the same temp, about 200. And this is just like so falling apart tender. Our slow cooker roast is so tender. The thermometer was kind of just ripping through it. So you can see it's falling apart. Wow, amazing. <laughs> and let's check the potatoes. So here's one of those. I brought a fork. Super fork tender. And as you can see, it's still simmering along the edge. Now let's go over to our Instant Pot Roast. Okay, we're going to take the temp as well. Let's see, 150. Wow, that's like quite a bit lower than it was before. And I think you could even tell in the video, this is still one chunk of meat. It's not falling apart, really. You can see it still has quite a bit of cooking to do. How about these potatoes though? Let's see. Oh my gosh, there's still a tiny bit of resistance right there, right in the middle of the potato. There was just a tiny bit of resistance. This has been cooking for eight and a half hours. That is wild. See, it's not even like simmering. This is what the slow cooker pot roast looks like. It's so just like falling apart good. It's honestly amazing. Mm. I already ate some. Mm, I'm gonna find my some. Well, the Instant Pot Roast is finally done and look how beautiful it looks. It's actually super tender and it tastes really, really good. So here's the thing. It was quite the journey to get to this point. So this is the story of the Instant Pot Roast. Yesterday morning at around 9 a.m. is when I started the roast. I cooked them each for eight and a half hours on low. After eight and a half hours, the slow cooker roast was perfectly tender. It was so good. I was just eating out of it like all night. And then the Instant Pot Roast was not even simmering. It was 40 to 50 degrees cooler than the slow cooker. So I knew it was going to take a lot longer to cook. So I thought, okay, we'll just bump it up to high and we'll cook it for a couple more hours and we'll see how it looks. Between 10 and 11 last night, I went to check on the Instant Pot and it literally was like the exact same. Even on high, it had gone up a couple degrees, but I did not feel comfortable cooking it longer because I was going to bed. So there were two options. I thought, well, we could just cook it through the night. Maybe I'll just put it on low and I'll have to come down every couple hours to check, make sure like my house isn't going to burn down or I can put it in the fridge and then I'll cook it tomorrow. So that's what I did. Today, the next day, this morning around 8.30 a.m., I put it back in the Instant Pot and I put it on high and I was just curious how long it would take to cook. Well, now it's 6 p.m. the following day and it's finally ready to eat. All this to say, you can get some good results from the Instant Pot slow cooker function, but it takes two days. We want slow cooking, but we don't want that slow. If you're trying to decide whether or not to use the slow cooker function on the Instant Pot, I would just say, make sure you always cook on high and you give yourself at least one and a half times the cook time that's recommended for a slow cooker. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you like it, make sure you watch this one next and subscribe for more. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.